I'm on the Isle of Grain in Kent, uh, Thamesport to be precise. I'm very excited because these guys here and those tunnel segments that you can see there are being delivered tonight on an overnight freight train like this. Yes, I'm about to ride a freight train into the night that runs five days a week delivering concrete tunnel segments that are constructed here and then transported to the HS2 site at West Ryslip in northwest London. Our very long train has 24 flat wagons carrying six segments each. That's 144 segments in total per train. And using reporting code 6x82, our GBRF train heads out from London Thamesport at around half seven for its five hour journey into the night. This is actually fabulous. Grain crossing, proper old crossing with like the circular red. Train in the distance. I understand, is it Kelsey? Yes. You've, you've got levers inside of there. Yes, you I've pull, got semaphore signals. You've got semaphore signals with levers. It's blowing my mind. Can I get the token now for 6 x ray 82, please? Uh, All gone through? Perfect. Thank you. Bye. Got these are, six minutes. These are rare. Very. There's only two, us and Cliff. Where's Cliff? Uh, just down the road. Wow, what, only two left in Kent or just on this line? I just believe there's only these two in this, this, this part of the world. This is the 100 of Who railway line in Kent, which used to have several passenger halts, which all closed in 1961. The freight only line joins the passenger network at Who Junction between Higham and Gravesend. And here at Grain, the crossing gate is very much manually controlled. Yeah. This is fantastic. We better go. Uh, we better go catch our train. On board the Class 66, I find our driver Tony, and also accompanying me for tonight's journey is Simon Kemler, Regional Freight Manager for Network Rail's Southern Region. Simon, we've got to keep this succinct for a short video. We yes. enter the main line just by Gravesend. Who Junction? Who Junction? Then we go up through Dartford. Yes. Down to Lewisham. Yes. Then sort of drop down through Peckham and Nunhead. Yep, Wiggle yep. our way down through to Clapham. That's it. Round a bit of curve at Clapham. Yeah. Up through Ken Olympia, up yep. to Wilsdon. But then we're going to go round towards Acton, drop onto the Great Western. And there's a little curve off of uh, yeah the overground by Acton onto That's Acton it. Main Line. Onto the Great Western. Onto GWR. Yeah. And then how do we get up to West Ryslip? We're going to turn right at West Ealing uh, on the Greenford Branch. We got the Greenford Branch. One of your favourites. One of my favourites. Yeah. And then, and then left onto the little what was left of the old Main Line that follows the Central Line, and then West Ryslip. At about midnight, 1 a.m. tomorrow. Midnight, half, half midnight. Wow. In the Cultural Railway Project of 2017, I once dropped the infamous line, it's just a magnificent thing when I encountered a Class 37 close up. This is also magnificent. It might even be more magnificent. And we're not the only freight train running this evening, as we soon encounter another coming in the opposite direction. Where's that, where's that going? Aviation fuel, that's come from Heathrow Airport. Right. So Colbrook. Right. And then it comes back and refuels twice a day. Yeah. These provide 60% of Heathrow's aviation fuel. That's Heathrow's aviation fuel train. That is magnificent. Onto the southeastern network, and we're soon passing through passenger stations, obviously without stopping, and other trains too. I think a lot of people, Simon, I just want to comment upon, you know, people just see the railway as commuter trains and stuff. Yep. Occasionally you see the freight train running on through, but, you know, how much freight is there running around Britain's network doing stuff like this? I mean, there's loads. I mean, you know, we've just seen on our little journey from from who we've been going for about an hour or so, and we've seen how many freight trains come past us. I think uh, three or four. Three or four, maybe five, yeah. 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 And we know there's one that left for four hours, and there could be another one leaving later on this evening. So we have loads of freight trains running around, and obviously it's all about that balance between the passenger and the freight. Well, a lot of freight trains run at uh, night time or hours of darkness or outside the busiest periods. So a lot of the trains that are running are doing it at times that most people won't notice them. So this train, for example, runs with its loaded run, like we're doing now, between half seven and midnight. I mean, we're delivering, where, as if I'm somehow responsible, we're delivering parts for the HS2 build and, and the tunnel, but the oil train we saw, yep. that's aviation fuel for people getting flights to Heathrow. Yep. And when you catch a plane from Heathrow, you don't think that a freight train has run overnight somewhere from a depot all through London, out west to Heathrow, so that you can then take your flight, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Where are we? It's, we're at, uh, just past through Bexley yeah. on the Sidcup lines. I've been down this route so many times on a 465, 
never in a class 66 before. This is brilliant. It's, uh, it's 9.30 p.m. We've made it to uh, Lewisham, a platform of which I've stood on many times, and we're crawling very slowly. At five mile an hour, there's a five mile an hour speed restriction here due to uh, a bridge up ahead, which Network Rail deem we must go across slowly. Uh, so we're crawling through Lewisham. This is very surreal. So we just cleared Nunhead, Hecken coming up, and uh, oh, a little place called London, off to our right there. Hello London. Oh, that's my GoPro running out. Uh, Simon, is it me or has, has Peck and Rye had a lick of paint? Yeah, Peck and Rye has gone through a really awesome uh, refurbishment upgrade. Looks um, lovely. It looks absolutely fantastic. I haven't had a chance to go in there yet. I've still not done the waiting room. It's got, it's got the amazing no, I've, waiting room, I've right? seen pictures, so I've been I've on... I've still not done it. As part of my work, I've been going on um, meetings where we get updates from the sponsors who've been, who've been showing us pictures of like really detailed work or the paint work and stuff they've done. It is amazing. Oh, hang on. Simon, now we're out of Peckham and we faded into blackness again, so we can only talk during <laughs> cheering stations. stations when it's light. Oh, look, the overground. And as we're plunged into darkness there, it reminds me that now's a good time to flash back to earlier, to Thamesport, to see what's actually been loaded onto our train. This is where the concrete tunnel segments are made, then loaded onto these flat wagons, onto the train, where they're strapped down securely before they begin their slow journey across London. So these are normally started out life as taking shipping containers, like you'd see around the ports, we've got a whole load down there. We've got these uh, sprockets here, so this is what shipping containers would, would sit on, and they'd be lifted off when you're loading and unloading from a shipping port. Um, so Thamesport doesn't do it by rail anymore, but used to. And what we've got here is these giant platforms that they've used exactly the same shipping container connections. And you've got these two platforms here where they load the segments onto and they're stacked three high that you can see here. We also got a chance for a brief visit and see up close the Packardar factory where the concrete tunnel segments are made. On here in the, in the production line we have a production of a around 130-140 segments a day. So this means that we are doing around 20 rings a, a day, more or less, in two shifts. Every cycle is a seven minute cy a cycle, uh, so basically from one segment uh, we have uh, almost one hour until it gets into the oven and then we have five hours for the for the curing of the segments. We're right up close to the mould, look, and you can see here the, these sections just like flap down into place. Concrete goes in here. It's like a bakery, only instead of making cakes. <laughs> a, a bakery. They make yeah. tunnel segments. Yeah, they, so they've got like, they, they pull the concrete into the mould and, and then the mould goes round into the oven, it bakes in the oven and then they take, like, open the mould and take the tunnel segment out and away we go. It's like fairy cakes, only big and made of concrete. You say it waits for five hours. Around 63,000 tunnel segments are being made at Thamesport, although some are being used for the Atlas Road Services Tunnel too. And if each train, as mentioned earlier, carries 144 segments, then that's over 400 times that this freight train will run. Traffic that is not on the road system, but on the rail system instead, over a span of 90 weeks. Right, back on the train and we're passing above Brixton station and that then connects us up with the section down through Wandsworth and then Clapham. We're just casually rolling through uh, Clapham High Street. Simon's been taking pictures of low-hanging trees. Why have you been doing that? Well it's not low-hanging fruit, it's, uh, it's <laughs> some of our traffic is um, valuable uh, cars for example, we don't want them getting scratched so we're going to get those reported and get them cut back. And get the trees cut back. Oh and we're going into the darkness again. If you can put it with the darkness we're about to do the crazy bit that really has gone dark. Just go with the audio people. We're about to do the crazy bit around Battersea and Clapham and Stuart's Lane and all that as we kind of, oh, and all the junction, factory North junction. junction. Yeah, no, it's gone totally dark. Yeah, all you can see is my mic. <laughs> but I am here. The YouTubes can hear you. 
Yep. This, is, this is a rare... Oh, there's a train in the distance. So that is a southern service going into Clapton Junction, having left Victoria. But we're on a rare bit of track right now. Yes, yeah, so only freight and special tr passenger trains like so charters use this bit. What's this bit of track called? These are called the Kensingtons, which is a very short stretch of track until we reach the West London line. So right now we're going under... Brighton Main Line. We're going under the Brighton Main Line. Yes, which we're going to go under again. During a scheduled stop, I then get a chance to speak to our driver, Tony. What's getting me is that we're driving all this rare track, but so your route knowledge must be in incredible. You, how have you acquired all that knowledge just over, over it's just many over years? just over the years, yeah. It's literally just over the years, and I've been fortunate enough to, to retain it, um, which isn't easy to do. But, you know, the more, the more you sign route-wise and the more traction, the more likely you're going to be used to, to cover, you know, unusual workings. So, so by default, you end up covering all those routes uh, and refreshing them. But like, we're we're stopped by Acton Yard right now, next to Acton Main Line. Presumably, yes. this is a like a popular kind of freight corridor, right? Yes. So, do you come through here a lot? Yes. This yeah, bit. Yeah. But Isle of Grain earlier, probably like, how often would you do that? Not that often. Um, I would say probably on average, uh, maybe three, four times a year. Sorry, I just got to pick up on it. You did you did the friendly driver wave. So I've loved it. The entire oh, yeah. time I've been in your cab tonight, yeah. every time we pass another train, you just you give it, you give them the wave. Yeah, we do. We <laughs> tend to all do that. We put the cab light on and we give a wave. And yeah, obviously at night, you, you, you're not prejudiced because you, it's just a headlight. <laughs> so you don't know what you're waving to, but it's, it's a train. And they're doing the same job as you, and why not, you know? Um, it's a beautiful thing. Yes, it's nice. It's nice. You feel like you've got a lot of... You're going somewhere... You're in the middle of nowhere and it's dark and it's miserable weather and you pass a train and the cab light goes on, you get a big cheery wave. It kind of makes you feel <laughs> like you're not quite so alone. Out of Acton Yard, we go along the GWR relief lines onto the Greenford branch and we're soon approaching West Ryslip. And this is us arriving at West Ryslip. In the distance, I can see a couple of uh, orange-clad high-vis people on the platform. One of which I think is our shunter. We'll take over the train. That was just a fabulously surreal and magnificent experience. Like, what, five hours time? Was it five hours in the cab of the 66? What time, what time is it now? I don't know. Four out, four and a bit hours. But it's now going to shot around, back and forth, and basically eventually push the train, the, the, the load, into it's the good. HS2 siding, which is just... So Tony's still going to do the driving, but you've got two shunters. Right. One help, one help to uh, split the train off, and the other one is to help basically guide the train back past the signal. So with the radio, they guide it in. Yeah, OK, I've got enough, uh, I've got enough air to um, make the move now. Uh, obviously, we're going to stop in the platform, a proper stop, and pick up uh, all the Romanian people on the platform there before we carry on into the terminal. OK, understood. I'll give the signal on a call right now. Don't off shift, don't they? When they're not yeah, pulling a load, they yeah, really like. like yeah, 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 when they're late local. Yeah, they're like um, boom. <laughs> that Three thousand horsepower can suddenly. Gosh, is unleashed. Okay, loco is at the back. We've got the clearance and the signal to go into the HS2 sidings. So it's uh, moving along. It'll pause when the loco gets uh, here. We'll jump on, and then we'll go into HS2. Keep setting back. Our train then enters the HS2 construction site at West Ryslip, and as I watch it be unloaded, I'm reminded that it's a combination of GB Rail Freight and Network Rail working together that has made this happen. My thanks also to HS2 and to SES who run the site at West Ryslip. Freight trains help keep trucks and lorries off the road and keeps Britain moving, much of this at night when many are asleep. It was genuinely fascinating to see it all in action. It's gone 1am. I want to go to bed. <laughs> I have to find a cup of tea. The train's arrived. Yep. They've de-strapped yep. straight away and they're unloading. Mm -hmm. It's happening straight away. That's it. Like within minutes of us arriving, no, they're, like, they're on it and the crane is happening and all the tunnel segments are being unloaded. Good. And that is how you take a train. But what I didn't realise, the final thing, is that I just thought this was like a once a week thing, but no, this oh, happens like nightly. It's five nights a week, sometimes six. Gosh. And it's going to be like this for the next three, four, five years. Doing this. How long it takes to build the tunnel? Because it's a long tunnel. It's a long tunnel. Okay. It's going all the way to this bit. 
You're going to Northolt? Here, through Northolt, and then down to Old Oak Common. That's it. That is a long tunnel. All right. Simon, thanks very much. You're very welcome. Thanks for Have coming. you enjoyed your time with me? Absolutely. It's been fantastic. <laughs> we just spent five hours in the cab of a train together. I know. Are we, are we still friends? Oh, just absolutely. I think so. There we go. <laughs> I should, next time I'll bring tea. That would be the, a flask of tea. Or maybe during, during the day or something. Thanks very much. I'm so tired. Let's go home. Good night. Cheers. Bye.